Good morning, church. I'm one of the pastors here, Pastor Cecilia from New Wine Ministries. I just want to welcome you. Um, <clears throat> as I was uh, writing my word yesterday, was well, Sunday actually, I just started thinking about uh, continuing on the word of faith. And I had a God thing happen. I was telling my sister, um, Irma, I said, oh, this morning, God, you just have me continue on faith, about the atmosphere of faith. And then we had special speakers here Sunday, and that's what Anna um, started out with about the atmosphere of faith. And my sister Irma like, I guess, and I said, all right, God, thank you, Jesus, for that confirmation. Because <laughs> I was like, all right. So I've been talking about um, faith, about our and I had told you guys about what started it. I thought about the resurrection and how we have to have faith to believe towards what he's speaking, right, in the resurrection. Um, faith towards God because our faith is what helps us to believe, right? Um, what, it, what is, what is um, faith towards God? And I had said, um, Scripture state that faith is a gift from God, and we have been given a measure of faith. The initial amount of faith is given to sustain the new life in Christ and to grow as we pursue God more deeply. We must believe by faith when we receive salvation. Amen. And I had asked you guys, is faith a seed you can increase by what you believe? And most of us said yes, because the scripture says yes, according to scripture. It says, um, First Hebrew 11, one says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then the application of faith is uh, us asking God to give us faith to believe. Amen? And then the Matthew 9, 26 says, Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be, be it done to you. Faith helps us to believe not what he can do, but what he will do. Amen? I always, I always like that because um, years ago when I was going to minister training school, I remember um, the pastor saying that everyone's able, to, uh, everyone's able to do it. It's if you're willing to do it, right? And when we have that faith and know and we stand, we know what he can do, right? And, and that, amen? So um, today I wanted to talk about the atmosphere of faith. And I got some questions for you. So how do we stir up the atmosphere of faith for yourself? How do you stir up the atmosphere of faith? Go ahead, Connie. Worship. Worship. Anybody else? How do you stir up the atmosphere of faith? Declaring the word. Declaring the word. Did you have something else? Oh. Well, I was just going to say what she said. Oh, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? Just, just knowing he is with you. Right, reflecting on what he has done for us, right? That knowing he, uh, like I always say, Ann always says, do it again, Lord. You know, I know what you did. I know you can do it again, right? Do it again, Lord, right? Well, I started thinking about that, and I said, well, first I need to ask you, do you believe you can change the atmosphere of faith? The atmosphere, not faith, can you believe, if you can change the atmosphere. So I always think about this. This is years ago, and I've shared this before, that uh, when I first took over Tuesday morning about how the Holy Spirit was talking about changing the atmosphere of faith and just praying. Well, one day Vicki called me, and I had, just, I had just left the park. I was on a prayer walk and had just left. And Vicki called me and started telling me about what was going on in the, in the home. And I... I took power and authority, and we started praying. I, I tell everybody this. I don't know how I got home because I was driving when she I had just pulled out of the park. And I was like, literally, I pulled into my driveway, and I'm like, how did I even get here kind of thing? But, you know, I started, I knew God was showing me right then what it means to change the atmosphere in that home. And I just started praying and interceding. And then I want to say it was like on a Friday, and then Sunday uh, Vicki ran up to me and she said, as soon as we got off the phone, he came in, you know, you shared with me what happened. And I knew God was teaching me how to, you know, change the atmosphere. And I started standing and believing it because I seen it actually happen, right? Because a lot of times we need to see it to believe it, but I didn't see it, but I knew what was happening. Amen. I knew God was in there. So, <clears throat> 
Let, so I want to practice something with you guys that I learned. I don't remember who. I think it was um, Jane Hammond. She said, let's all stand up. Let's stand up. Why don't you stand up? The ones that are here, stand up. And she said, let's get in our praise pose. And that's say, you know, whatever you praise and then just start worshiping and speaking in your holy language. And let's do it for like a 60 seconds or so. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So when there's times when you don't even have words, when you're going through a trial, or there's times when you say, I, Lord, I don't even know, I can't even speak, you get up and do your, pro, your uh, pose. She called it your praise pose. And just start activating that faith in you and start speaking, and it changes your atmosphere. Have any of you guys ever just did that and just start praising, and it just changes the atmosphere in your home? Yes. Amen? Yes. So I just wanted us to do it so the people online know, you know what, we need, last uh, <clears throat> couple of weeks ago I talked about, you know, the faith that we have to take action, right? So one of our actions is we got to stir up that atmosphere, right? We got to stand up and get in our, our praise pose, Amen. What are we doing? We are setting the atmosphere within us. Remember, you remember the Holy Spirit's in us, right? We got to activate that and get it moved. Remember I said that faith is an action, so action is a must, right? We have to do our part. A lot of times when I'm talking to people and they're going through a trial or thing, and I'll say, what are you doing? You know, kind of, what are you doing? You know, are you in the word? Are you praising? You know, what are you doing? Because we got to take part, right? We got to get in. We have to enter in. We have to do our part, and it's action, right? Amen. Amen. You set the atmosphere. God stirred the faith in me to believe even before it happens. Um, I had wrote down a chaplain call out. The very first time I got on there, I went to a chaplain call out. I was like, it was Father's Day, so they couldn't find no one to go with me because I wasn't technically supposed to go by myself. So I just started like, okay, God, I don't know what I'm walking into. I'm just going to start speaking in tongues and start changing the atmosphere within my car and just start praying. Lord, prepare me. Be, make me ready. If this, you know, and give me the words. And I just started stirring up that atmosphere. So when I got out of the car, I took that with me. Amen. So that's what, you know, just for yourself, you're going to stir up the atmosphere when you have to even go somewhere or be somewhere or do something. I was speaking to uh, someone the other day and they were saying, they were kind of speaking negative about they had to go to this party and why they didn't want to go, but it was a family, you know. And I said, first of all, stop speaking that. Second of all, how are you going to change the atmosphere when you walk in? They got to know that the Holy Spirit's with you. So what are you going to do? And she looked at me and she said, what? I said, what are you going to do to change that atmosphere? What are you going to do to bring that in there? I said, prepare yourself. Start praying. Start preparing yourself because it was like a week um, that she was going to go the following Saturday. And I just said, you need to start praying all week and asking God to open up doors. Start preparing yourself and you have the atmosphere in you you know, and the Holy Spirit's with you. And so I asked her the following week, I said, how did it go? And she said, it went really great. You're right. I needed to, right? She needed to take action, and especially how she was speaking, right? Because a lot of times to change the atmosphere, how are we speaking, right? Right, she said, Scripture says, building our holy faith, that's praying in the Holy Spirit, amen? Words have power. Words have power. Right. 
Right. The words have power, and we have to stand and believe what the word says, and he's going to do it. Amen? Amen. Declare of your home and say, My kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The God who rules heaven and earth will rule in my home. A lot of times when I'm going through something, or and I've shared this before too, that <clears throat> it was just, I felt like it was chaos going in. We have dog, you know, my son has a dog, we have a dog. And so the dogs were acting up, and at that time we had three dogs. And I was like, okay, Lord, this has got to stop. And it was just a lot of stuff going on, you know. And I was like, no, you know what? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I'm taking authority over that. I got my anointing oil out. I started anointing all the doors, windows, and went outside, walked around, anointed all the doors and windows. And I, I did it like seven times. I remember saying, you know, going over and just praying in, inside and outside of the home. And um, all of a sudden, I noticed when I stopped, the dogs weren't barking, nothing. It just seemed such a peace in the home. And I remember my son coming home from work, because this was a few years ago. He came home from work, and he said, what did you do with Julia, his dog? And I said, what? He goes, she's acting like she's drugged up. And I said, she must have got a hold of the smell of the, of the anointing I was putting that, you know. I said, I was putting the oil, and I'm like telling. And he started laughing, and she didn't act up, because we had... I want to say, because she was in, um, we got her from the shelter, so she was abused, so she would, you know, whine and bark, and he was, like, shocked, like, what's wrong with her? And then I swear after that, she didn't act like that anymore. It was, like, such a peace over her, and I was, like, and so it's funny, because he's, like, what did you do? I mean, it was that evidence that he, when he got home from work, he recognized something was different with her, the dog, and it was fun. Yeah, well, I anointed all the dogs, and but I kept praying, and I said, I don't know. But ever since then, she's been fine, but it's been years now but it, that it happened. But that's what we have to do, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know what, Lord, open up the heavens in my home. You know, I just started praying and going around in the house, right? I was set in the atmosphere. God is, God is in your life. Use his name and take authority, amen? You don't see it, but by faith. You need to stir up the atmosphere and speak in your holy language. A lot of times we want to see things because, like I say to you guys a lot, that I'm a visual person. But you know what? I don't have to see it. I know he's with me. I know what he's done. I know what he can do, right? Amen? Don't get caught up on you wanting to see something because we don't know what God is doing behind the scenes, right? Um. John the Baptist wasn't a normal person. He looked different. He consumed himself with God and what he wanted for him. And that's what we have to ask ourselves. What does God want us for us? What is, I was uh, talking to Vicki, because we had an awesome, um, we had prophets this come, come in this past week. And one of the things in the training, he was like, what's your purpose? You know, what, what, what are you training for? What are you? And so sometimes we have to ask ourselves, you know what, don't get caught up in everything. What does God has called me to? So a lot of times people say, um, I was talking to someone the other day, and it was like, I don't know. I don't, and I said, have you ever gotten any words spoken over you? Have scriptures come to you? And she was like, yeah, yeah. And I said, you need to get all that stuff out and ask God to start showing you your purpose. What has he calling you to? What is he showing you? Because actually, um, when they, let me look and see if I could find the actual questions that they asked us. Uh, one of the questions was, what is your vision for my, for my area? To ask yourself, what is the vision? What is my assignment? And when he said that, that was the second question, what is my assignment? It started really, because I was like, you know, I know I'm called to do God's purpose and plan for my life. And, you know, so, but when he asked that question, what is my assignment? I started really thinking about it the whole time. I think it might have been the first or second day that he asked us that. And I started, I went back and looked at a lot of my words that I had in, in the past years. And one of the things I've been prayed over a lot of times about prayer walk, but a few times I've been prayed, uh, prayed over about my region. And so when I'm doing my prayer walk, I need to be praying for my region. And so it reminded me, so I went back and listened to some of my words, and I was like, I'm supposed to be praying from the region. I'm supposed to be doing, you know, so go back and listen to those things because then and the Holy Spirit, you know, for you to catch those words now, you know, because a lot of times when we get a word, 
I don't know about for you guys, we get a word and then I have to let it work in me. Right? You got to let it work in you and sink in you. So I'll listen to it a few times. But that word about the regions, I probably had about 20 years ago. And I, I, but I literally went back and listened to a lot of my words this past week. And like, what am, what is my assignment, my actual assignment? Because a lot of times I'll say, Lord, you know, I know my purpose and plan is to do your work, your will for my life. But what are you actually assigning me to? So a lot of times we need to ask ourselves. So that kind of helps us and guides us, even like in ministry. What do I should be doing? Kind of where am I going? What is it? So just to guide you, you know what? You know what? The Lord's called me to this. Or he said that I was going to uh, raise up uh, children or something like that, give you a word. And you know what? You never worked in the children ministry, never did anything. And you're like, maybe I should start helping a little better. Maybe I should start, you know, what is he calling to me? So ask Ask those questions, and he will answer you. Amen? Jesus dethroned the enemy of the earth. He didn't keep it. He gave it to you to become stewards over it. So you set the atmosphere, right? He, he, threw, he did his part. We got to do our part. Right? We have the Holy Spirit in us, and our part is to set the atmosphere for where you're at, your area. Amen. Amen. I know there was a few times when I worked, because I told you guys I worked, when I worked for OSA, I worked prison reentry. So that tells you what kind of people I worked with, how I had to go in the prisons and the jails. I had to set the atmosphere. There was a few times where I was just like, I, I could feel the darkness. A few times, I mean, I had Jose praying and interceding with me in the morning before, but I did. Now I know that was God was teaching me about intercession and what to do and how to. But I really had to like be prayed up and say, no, I'm going to go there and change the atmosphere. That's not going to change me. I'm going to change them, right? And I remember one of my coworkers. He said, Cecilia, do you always have to be this cheery in the morning? And I said, Yes, I do. And I said, Good, because I would always go in. Good morning. How are you guys doing? You know, and then they would. Be, it, the, you know, because it was this heaviness and gloom. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to allow that to take me. Amen? Yeah. Setting the atmosphere. How will you react when things come against you about setting the atmosphere? I'm going to share what I wrote on uh, Facebook the other day because my son, he had a God thing happen to him. I had wrote the scripture, uh, James 1, 2. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fail in, when you fall into um, various trials. Oh, what's going on? So I, this is what I wrote. This morning when I got up, I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me today? I started looking up scripture about faith and joy. What does the word say? Because we, we need to walk by faith in order to receive his joy. There is joy in the trials. I was, I was talking to my son yesterday morning, and he was talking about when things happen to him, how he can get so upset, but then it works out for the better. Made me think about that saying, joy comes in the morning, because God's working it all out. Have you ever thought about God is strengthening us through the trials and teaching us how to walk by faith? Trials may come, but I'm counted in all joy because I know my Father is maturing me through the process. Amen? And a lot of times when we go through things, that's why I said, how are you going to stir up the atmosphere of faith where, when things are coming against you? When my son was talking about what happened was he, he, he got in a car accident. <clears throat> I forgot what day it was, Thursday, it was either Thursday or Friday, he got in a car accident, and the lady totaled his car, and he was like, every time I try to save some money to move, do, you know, he got all worked up, and I was thinking, okay, God, what are you speaking to him? I didn't say it, you know, and I was just praying, and then the next morning, he said to me, because then my, uh, my sister, one of my sisters said, oh, my sister-in-law has a car for sale right now, and she only wants $500 for it. So, and it was the same exact car that he had, so he could take some stuff off of it to, you know, make it better. But he was like, this car drives nicer, and he starts talking about it. And he goes, I, I, he said, um, I noticed something today. And I said, what did you notice? And he said, every time I get all upset, get worked up, and how 
the joy comes in the morning. How God, I see God making it better. Now I got a better vehicle. And he goes, that happened when, you know, a, another incident happened and then, then he got a promotion. He was like how God, you know, and then I, that's why I said joy comes in the morning. But we're allowing, I said, you were allowing the enemy to get you all worked up or, you know, you, that situation to get you all worked up instead of, you know, what setting that up. So, no, I'm not going to receive. I know God has something better for me. This is, and he was like, yeah, you're right. And I even uh, told him, I said, you gave me a word for for um, prayer warriors kind of thing, because that's what happens for a lot of us, right? We get caught up in the trial instead of setting the atmosphere, right? Right? Amen? God is in, in your life. Use his name to take authority. Amen? Yes, Lord. So how do you stir up the faith by sharing your testimony. Be who God created you to be. That was really big. Be who God created you to be. Right. Amen. Because a lot of times we see things or so we see people, oh, I want to be like that. No, who did God create you to be? Be you. You be you. I always say that. You be you. Right? Everyone, you know what? Everyone else is taken. You be you. <clears throat> What's your purpose? Mine is, and that's what I said I had wrote down. What's your purpose? Mine is to do what God has called me to. But then I was thinking about that question about ask God, what is your assignment? And I had put that about praying for the regions in my area that I didn't even think about that. I went back and listened when, when um, I think it was Pastor Joe who said that this week. Um, what is your assignment? What is your assignment? He kept, because he kept talking about, um, the assignment for the church, but he kept saying, what's your assignment as a personal individual person also? And so I had to like really ask myself, what is my, you know, assignment kind of thing, right? Because you carry the atmosphere where you're at, even when you're with the people of, of God or, you know, what, what is your assignment? Because we all have a part, amen? So you carry the atmosphere too. So, so how do you stir up uh, faith? By sharing your testimony, amen? Um, and I have put, see your atmosphere like John did. Take authority, right? He didn't allow things happen. Romans 1, 16, 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteous of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith alone. And I had wrote again, who is, who is just? We are the just, right? Amen. And the just is the righteous. Um, <clears throat> Mark 6, 1 and 6 says, there was no atmosphere of faith. It says, uh, he went away from the, there and came from their hometown, and, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath day, he began to teach in the in synagogues. And many who heard him was astounded and says, where do the men get these things? What is the wisdom he gave to them? How, how are such mighty words done by his hand? It's not that the the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and, and Judith, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could not do mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he, he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about among the village teaching. So I had wrote over, wrote over the thing. There was no atmosphere of faith there, right? How, do we do that sometimes when we see people that we knew from back of the day or, you know, and then you see them save and you're like, how they got that or how you. So we started asking instead of setting the atmosphere, oh, God changed him. I'm so glad to see him save, right? <clears throat> I was thinking about that the other, um, my sister, my sister Carol says um, that she was talking to one of my nieces 
and she told her she started going to this church and she got baptized. I mean, my heart just started leaping for joy because I don't see this niece as much. But I was like so happy and excited. And, you know, and I had to text her, you know, you get excited. And that's what we, we want to do and be, set that atmosphere and be excited for people who's coming to the Lord. Don't say, well, what they, why are they doing that? Or who gives them the right? Kind of like they did with Jesus, right? Instead of being, and that was his hometown. So to me, that was his, that was the people who knew him, right? So we have to set that atmosphere are you setting the right atmosphere for your family and your community? That's my question for you. Are you setting the right atmosphere? You know, are you being transparent? If I, if I go to your house today, you're going to be the same person you are that we see all the time, right? I always think, oh, if Jesus shows up, you know, right? Yeah. Are you going to be that same person that you are that everyone sees all the time? Because I think about a saying my father used to say, because we, we were never allowed to spend the night over people's houses. And I used to always want to spend the night at one of my friends. And I'm like, that's your friend. He goes, I don't know what people do behind closed doors. You know, that was always a saying with me. So I had to break that culture thinking too. And like, no, nope, they are who they say they are, right? So that's your, you know, are you setting the atmosphere for your family, your community? Think about Matthew 5, um, 5, 8, and 5, 13. I'm just going to paraphrase about when he went to the, um, the, um, the scenario. Had, when he had went and he went into the city and the, when the guy was paralyzed and he was talking to them and he, at, he said, you know, my servant's sick and tells Jesus what's going on. And Jesus is like, if you have the faith to believe, then you know what? It's going to happen. I'm going to heal him. And he believed it, Right? He believed it, and that's what I had put, that there, they uh, understood the concept of faith. They had faith to believe Jesus, right? And that's what we have to do, set that atmosphere of faith and show them. You know what, that's what I, I tell a lot of you guys when I first started going to our old church. I went to Tuesday morning, and the, the person who ministered at that time, Mama Jean, she would say stuff, and, and when I was just a new Christian going back to church, and and I'm like, wow, she really believes that stuff. She really believes that, right? Because she would say, I have the faith. She would pray over people, be healed in Jesus' name. And they would get, and I, it just would astonish me, like, wow, she really believes. But you know what it was doing? It was building my faith because now I know that what my God can do. I know he, uh, he performs miracles. I know what he, you know, I've seen him do it. Now, I'm I'm that mama Jean because I'm like, nope, I stand in that because I see it, right? And I used to say, oh, I just want faith like that. Well, I had to stir up that atmosphere of faith within me, right, and stand in that. Amen? Amen. The atmosphere we allow will determine what we receive. That's good. That's good. Right? The atmosphere we allow will determine what we receive. What are you determined? What are you standing in? Amen. Two weeks ago, I talked about how to apply your faith. I want to say it again. What does it do when we apply our faith? It stirs up the atmosphere. It empowers us to believe God, to believe his word, to trust him at his word, believe for the blessing he has promised. It increases us for the other, for, to go to a higher level, right? Building our confidence to walk by faith. Amen. So I ask you again, are you setting the right atmosphere for your family and your community? Let's get ready for communion. Oops. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Amen. Sue, I just said for the people online, Sue said that uh, the Lord gave her a word about he is restoring for, to all the people in Michigan, right? Amen, amen. I received that because I keep saying that my word this year is joy, and I'm standing in it. Amen. I 
I'm restoring the joy. Yes, Lord. I'm restoring his joy. His joy. Vicki is just uh, confirming that's a confirmation for her, too. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. I'm receiving. That's just examining our hearts to the Lord. Right. The joy that he gives us, not just for ourselves, because people are going to see it in us and they're going to want to receive it. Amen. And that's why it's so important for you to stand. Uh, you either stir up the atmosphere of faith because when they see it in you, they're going to want what you want. Amen. That he's stirring up that joy. We were his joy, the joy that was set before. Yes. We were his joy. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. And it's so important. You know, uh, We always do communion, but it's so important for us to search our heart because we have to do things with the right heart, right, for other people to see. Yes, Lord. For I received from the Lord, which I also deliver to you, that the, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it remembrance of me lord i'm just so thankful that we can come before you lord lord thank you just to show us if there's anything that doesn't belong to remove it in jesus name amen mm. Amen. <clears throat> church as you go just to remind yourselves of those questions am i stirring up the right atmosphere where I'm at, in my home, at my job, you know, am I walking by faith Amen. and standing in it? Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a blessed day, church. <laughs>